today we'll talk about an important paradigm to investing involving the optimization of a portfolio by maximizing return for a given level of risk. Let's begin. Let's begin by talking about an important paradigm on portfolio construction called covariance. Covariance is a measure to determine the directional relationship between the returns on two assets. A positive covariance means that asset returns move together, while a negative covariance means they move inversely. The lower the covariance between two assets, the lower their combined standard deviation, and therefore the lower the risk in achieving the weighted sum of their expected returns when we make a portfolio containing these two assets. Covariance is not the same as correlation. Covariance is an indicator of how two random variables change concerning each other. Correlation, on the other hand, is a derivative of covariance and measures the strength of this relationship. The effect of selecting assets for a portfolio with low covariance can be achieving greater returns for less risk than if we purchased any one of these assets individually. This is the mathematical way to maximize on diversification. I see a lot of people talk about diversification but apply it incorrectly. While it's true that diversification inherently requires you to hold more than one asset, perhaps a large handful of assets, that is only half the equation. Imagine a portfolio holding only a handful of different gold miners or only a handful of different forms of cryptocurrency. The covariances and correlations of the returns on these assets on each other would be highly positive, making the benefit of diversification negligible. Covariances have significant applications in finance and portfolio construction. For example, the CAPM, which we've looked at in a former video, is used to calculate the expected return of an asset. One of the model's key variables, beta, is calculated using the covariance of the asset to the market. Next, we're going to talk about the efficient frontier. The efficient frontier rates portfolios on a scale using expected return on the y-axis versus risk on the x-axis. The compound annual growth rate, or CAGR, of an investment is commonly used as the return component, while annualized standard deviation, otherwise known as volatility of the CAGR, depicts the risk metric. The efficient frontier graphically represents portfolios that maximize returns for the assumed risk or volatility. Ideally, an investor seeks to fill a portfolio with individual securities or assets that offer exceptional returns but with a combined standard deviation that is lower than the standard deviations of the individual securities that make up that portfolio, thereby maximizing expected return while simultaneously minimizing risk. Imagine we have a set of portfolios with different proportions of assets it holds. For example, 90% of a portfolio is held in an ASX 200 index fund, and the remaining 10% is a cash or a bond fund. We can use models such as the CAPM to plot the weighted expected risk reward combinations of all these portfolios on this graph. It's going to look something like this. With the 100% bond portfolio starting here towards the bottom left and the 100% stock portfolio up here at the top right. A key finding of the concept was the benefit of diversification resulting from the curvature of the efficient frontier. The curvature is integral in revealing how diversification improves the portfolio's risk reward profile. It also reveals that there is a diminishing expected return for increasing portfolio risk. Let's demonstrate those last two points. Here, at the bottom of the curve, we have a relatively high amount of risk for the least return than the other combinations that lay higher on this curve. So we would reject this combination of asset allocation for this portfolio. Why would we reject it? Because if we can achieve greater expected returns in the other portfolios for the same risk, then we would consider the lower return portfolios as inferior. Moving over to the top right of the curve, we have a combination that represents the highest expected rewards, but for correspondingly large risk with the 100% stock, 0% bond portfolio, which slowly scales down as we move down the curve. Depending on personal risk tolerance, we may or may not reject these portfolios. And sliding down the curve, we find that it bends sharply. This is demonstrating the point in which we can achieve the largest unit of return per unit of risk. We'll look at how this is calculated in a future video. The most important finding from this work is that one assumption in investing is that a higher degree of risk means a higher potential return. 
Conversely, investors who take on a low degree of risk have a low potential return. According to this theory brought forward by Nobel laureate Harry Markowitz, there is an optimal portfolio that could be designed with a perfect balance between risk and return. In other words, even the most risk-seeking investor as well as the most risk-averse investor can both benefit immensely by diversifying into assets that move independently from one another such as a small allocation to bonds for a risk seeker or a small allocation into equities for a risk averse investor, thereby maximizing on the expected risk return profile. There are several criticisms of the assumptions of this theory. However, this theory mostly holds up in real life and the application of this concept should at least be considered by every investor. Harry Markowitz famously said that diversification is the only free lunch in investing. What he meant by that is that diversification is the only thing an investor can do where they are more or less guaranteed to increase their return without increasing their risk. I hope it's been an informative video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.